Hello, my name is Jeff Kidwell. I'm the trombone instructor here at the University of Central Oklahoma and uh, I've been asked to give a small demonstration on how to get started on the trombone and maybe some warm-up ideas and some routines. So uh, I thought I'd show you this. This is a uh, warm-up book that's been around for gosh nearly 75 years uh, by Emory Remington. Warm-up exercises and uh, it starts off very basic, um, uses some long tone exercises, things that can help produce better tone quality, that sort of thing. So I thought I'd demonstrate some of that. Um, for young players, I think the best thing is to start off um, playing a little bit on mouthpiece and so they can do things like this. Everything is always timed with a metronome so that we don't rush or drag. Um, and we do four beat patterns, so if we go... <coughs> And then the idea is that if we were to put the horn together, this is just our amplifier. So if I can go. In the Remington warm up, you start on the note B flat, which is usually a higher note for beginning trombones. A lot of people need to start on the note F. So I'll do just a little bit of that. Now if you notice, there's some things that we haven't discussed that are very important. Good posture is, imp is very important, so have your back off the back of your chair. Practice in a chair that's probably like a kitchen chair, not like your lazy boy recliner would be a good idea. Um, breathe all the way to your toes all the time, regardless of how much air you're going to put through the instrument. Um, you got to fill the tank up all the way, and then you regulate how much air comes out, kind of like a scuba tank does. Um, and you always make the instrument come to you. You don't ever want to have what I call taco neck. If you eat a taco and your head's leaning this way so you don't lose all your goody, that's taco neck. And you'll see a lot of trombone players who look like this. We want to hold the horn straight up. It sits in a V. So if I'm looking straight at the camera, the horn is in a V. My hand is held this way. Uh, the, the left hand is in what I would call a gun position. Um, these days in public school we don't want to use the word gun very much so this could be the cool guy with our finger out or something like that. But um, I call it the gun so we have three fingers in the box, index finger goes across and thumb goes to the top. Your right hand is the live long and prosper Vulcan sign and then we turn palm up and two fingers go below the slide and two fingers go above and then the thumb sits on top of the slide brace. Now the next thing that we would do is we would make sure that we breathe deeply and as we uh, attack the note we always tongue so. And the idea behind that exercise is that we have a reference pitch and then we move the slide down to first, second, third and fourth position so on so on. The next thing that young players need to work on probably is some tonguing, some speed. So there are all kinds of exercises for this. The one I like the best is what I call a 10 note tonguing exercise. This is for more advanced players but we can do a major scale or a minor scale or any type of scale you want and we'd go. The reason it's called the 10 note is because I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 up the scale and then I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's really rocket science, but that's what we do for a 10 note. And you can do that in any key and it works tonguing and it works scale and it works, you can do different articulation patterns, slurs, tongues, whatever you want to do. For brass players, it's also very important to work on flexibility. So things like this. And it's important to do those on mouthpiece also. For young players, things like uh, rocket ships. Just go as high as you can go. Uh, bombs that don't explode. Um, American sirens. or British irons. All those are just lip slurs, but they sound like sound effects, and so those are great to do on mouthpiece. 
always remember on any brass instrument that the mouthpiece is the instrument and your mouth. This is the amplifier. So you always have to be accurate on the mouthpiece, and if you're accurate on the mouthpiece, then putting the horn together is pretty easy. Um, the way that we tongue is the tongue, just like on any other brass instrument, the tongue strikes where the teeth go into the roof of the mouth. So we don't try to tongue like we're spitting watermelon seeds, because the tongue, if I do that, the aperture is the way the lips are set up, and if the tongue keeps hitting this thing, it throws the lips all out of whack. So my tongue has to strike higher up. And if I need to slur, and I need it to be smooth. Rather than using a T syllable, I use a D syllable. So rather than ta 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 ta, I go ta da 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 da, and that gives me the slur effect on that. Slide has to work quickly, and other than that, uh, it's it's just a lot of air. All right, so the care and maintenance of your trombone. This part, as you can see by your video, uh, can be dented and not looking spectacular and basically can be hit by a tank, and it's okay. The bell is the resonating uh, chamber and the amplifier part of the trombone. But this part, the slide, is two parallel tubes that have to stay parallel, and if they get a dent in them that you can't even see sometimes, the slide won't work properly, and it just makes it hard to play the trombone. So the care and maintenance of the trombone really have to do uh, with the slide itself. And the best way to do it for young players is to have slide oil, and what they would do is they'd put a little, couple little drops of slide oil, same thing as valve oil, at the top of the slide, it would run down the inner tubes. We have two tubes here. They would run down the inner tubes, and I would leave all this together, because for little kids, putting this back together is a struggle. It would run down, and as it gets towards the bottom, there's a wider section of the slide called the stocking, and it gets there, and that's really the only friction on a trombone slide is these bottom four inches down here. Originally the trombone slide was that same diameter all the way from the top to the bottom, but it was so much friction it was hard to move and so they decided, well, hey, if we only make this little chunk bigger, then uh, it works pretty good. The horn still seals so it does. we don't lose air around the tubes and uh, you don't have as much friction. So that, that oil going down there is a, makes a big deal and then the smoothness of the slide is dependent upon whether or not your slide's aligned and if you don't have dents and then if you've got it oiled and I would oil it every day. Up here you have a tuning slide. This is greased by, uh, it can be greased with tuning slide grease or with Vaseline or with even chapstick works pretty good. Um, so so that, that's the tuning slide. And for younger players, again, it should be uh, pulled out maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch on most trombones, and that basically puts the instrument in tune. The only problem with the trombone player, or the only nice thing about a trombone player, if you will, is that we play a giant tuning slide. A trombonist never has a reason to be out of tune because we can always adjust our pitch, but your ears have to work good and you have to be able to sing what it is that, that you want to play. Um, if you can't sing and don't have a good sense of pitch, maybe trombone is not for you. Trombone is actually more closely related to the string instruments than it is to the brass instruments in that way. Because if you think about it, a violin has no frets. They have a fingerboard and their ears have to tell them what's in tune and what's out of tune. So the trombone relates very well that way. So that's kind of the care and maintenance. This is a water key. That's condensation. That's not spit necessarily. Um, and you don't want to have a leaky cork. But other than that, the trombone's pretty treble free. It's a pretty nice instrument. Slide oil is a petroleum product. So as it gets dry or heats up, um, not from friction, but just kind of over time, it will develop a buildup down here on the stockings. A lot of people, once they run out of their slide oil, will move to a liquid slide cream, and that works better. So you put the same way, liquid slide cream at the top, let it run down, and then usually have an atomizer bottle, an old hairspray bottle works great, and they spray down here because, again, this is the only place the friction's going. So they spray down here, and then they start working, and the combination of the water droplets on top of this um, kind of uh, cold cream based product puts up a little teeny tiny uh, film of water and then the slide moves very smoothly. So it's, it's really interesting uh, the way that it all works. It's all physics and science and stuff. If you choose the trombone, you'll have a lot of fun. I think the trombone is, is unique in the sense that uh, in my world, I play with the Oklahoma City Philharmonic. I play with an eight-piece rock band that does Chicago tunes and Blood, Sweat and & Tears and Bruno Mars and all kinds of things. I play in a Dixieland jazz band that plays traditional jazz. I play in a 20-piece big band. 
Um, I play in brass quintets. I, the trombone is a very versatile instrument and it's used in all types of music, which is really uh, neat for me anyway.